describe everything. This is something no business wants to hear, right? Especially if your company has successfully grown from a startup into a stable business with huge customer base, stable mobile applications, and global growth perspectives. We are here today to tell our story of tight transformation where we did actually rewrite everything. We'll share how we came to this decision, how we communicated it to the business, how we restructured the team, how we solved technical challenges and adjusted processes. Now, let's hear from Jorgos about Tide. Thank you, Anna. Hello, everyone. So, Tide was founded in 2015, and having launched our first uh, product in UK in 2017, Tide is a leading digital business backing challenger with more than 10% of market share. But Tide isn't just a financial services platform. It's a vision brought to life, aimed at revolutionizing how businesses manage their finances, saving them time and money. Our dedicated teams are spread across multiple locations and uh, remote offices, and we've grown to serve two dynamic markets, the UK and India. Like Anna mentioned, we're here today to share our transformation journey, our shift to Flutter. And this change was more than just a strategic decision. It accelerated our mission and opened the way for fresh opportunities. But let's take a closer look at why Tide needed this change. As a business, we wanted to be able to enter a new market with a minimum effort and cost possible. And at that point in time, India was our first stop. We also wanted to rapidly respond to market changes and user feedback, but also to be able to deliver lean MVPs following a usability principle. Finally, we wanted to minimize the cost of building new products and features. But our current product was not, was not built with such flexibility in mind. Firstly, our architecture lacked internationalization readiness, making global expansion very complex. Additionally, the, the APIs were tailored specifically for the UK market. The user journeys and flows were predominantly UK-centric, hindering any adaptability, and the third-party integrations uh, were tightly coupled in the code base, posing even more scalability obstacles. Given these constraints, the need for change was not only important, but urgent. Thank you. So, it was clear this situation required a fundamental change, not only in our tools, but also in our mindset. So, we sat down to think how the engineering team could help the company here. We identified these three objectives that would accelerate our business growth and strengthen our engineering capabilities. We wanted to release our products faster, reach our customers quicker, and adapt to new markets at speed. This is vital in the financial services market, which is constantly evolving and where speed often equals success. We also wanted to empower our existing team of native mobile developers to build faster and more efficiently. And we wanted to release new features to our users on both mobile platforms simultaneously. As you see, our migration was driven by desire for speed, efficiency, and consistency. So how did we approach these goals? Here we have prepared a timeline that represents key activities we have focused on during this transformation and their sequence or concurrency. Uh, don't worry if it looks like too much at once. We'll now talk about each of these items in detail. So we started by exploring what technology we could use to achieve our goals. But first of all, we had to decide on the approach. Greenfield, where the project starts from scratch, or Brownfield, where the existing solution is slowly refactored to meet the new requirements. Obviously, when starting from scratch, you don't have to deal with technical debt and legacy solutions, but it takes much more time to reach the same level of productivity as you were at before. With Brownfield approach, you can add new features faster, leveraging existing infrastructure, but the technical debt will slow engineers down increase complexity, and impose unnecessary constraints. After relating both, we decided to go with Greenfield approach, because what engineer would deny the pleasure of rewriting everything from scratch, right? Um, a joke aside, we had compelling reasons for this. As Jorgos mentioned, we needed to launch an alpha product for a new country quickly. We didn't want to introduce additional complexity into our existing solution, 
which was not ready for globalization anyways, and updating it would also require significant effort. So this made the Greenfield approach a clear choice. And next we had to decide on the technology to build our new code base with. We explored these three options, using native development again, or going with cross-platform technologies, Flutter or Kotlin multi-platform mobile. Because of technical details and performance issues, we did not look into technologies like React Native or Ionic. Kotlin multi-platform quickly left the competition because uh, back then it was impossible to create shared UI. Native development was a safe bet for us, but it would not give us the desired speed of development and feature parity between platforms. Flutter, on the other hand, allows building applications for multiple platforms, all from a single code base. Uh, it provides extremely productive development experience and has many more advantages. So eventually Flutter won the competition. This decision to rewrite the entire project from scratch with Flutter significantly impacted everything we did later and shaped the future of the project and the team. Speaking of that. Thank you. But executing a transformation at this scale isn't just simply about choosing the right technology or the right project approach. It's about navigating change, managing uncertainty, and engaging the people who will be affected by these decisions. We also understood that to make this transition successful, we needed to actively manage business expectations. Aligning stakeholders was our first step. We laid out our vision and the potential of this change. We explained the impact this will have on the short term in our product, but also how it positions us for success in the long term. We were open about the risks, discussed our plans to mitigate them, and we painted a clear picture of the journey ahead. But we didn't stop there. We knew that understanding promotes commitment, so we maintain a continuous dialogue with all stakeholders. We explained that our initial focus will be launching the Alpha product in India, a decision that will allow us to learn and adapt before introducing these changes back in the UK. We also highlighted the effort and patience this transformation will require, but also the crucial role that every stakeholder will need to play in it. Now, getting by in for a major change isn't just about securing initial approval. It's about consistently championing the vision and the benefits of this transformation. We knew that understanding and embracing Flutter wasn't going to be an overnight transition, and we made sure to evangelize the change continuously across the org. So we organized educational sessions, discuss its benefits uh, in team meetings, share success stories, and encourage general curiosity about Flutter. This active evangelization helped us maintain momentum, but more importantly, foster a positive attitude towards the change. Finally, we, pre we present the high-level roadmap that retain our agility. We knew that there were still many, many unknowns, and we needed the flexibility to respond effectively to, effectively to them. So we were transparent about this, emphasizing that this roadmap was just our guide, not, just, not, not our constraint. And uh, this clarity and openness helped us align the, uh, with, align the organization and effectively manage all the expectations. Now, as we move to the next section, let's remember that none of this would have been possible without the right team and people in place. In our journey, we managed to assemble a great team, but more importantly, to create an environment that fostered learning and growth. So we started by ensuring that everybody felt involved and everybody understood the importance of what we are about to embark on. We included our senior engineers in research and decision-making process, giving them this way the sense of ownership and responsibility towards this initiative. We also wanted to cultivate an environment of excitement, but also opportunity. So we discussed the potential impacts this transition could have on individual career growth. And it wasn't just about the company's growth, but also how this could enhance their skills, allowing them to venture into emerging and promising technology like Flutter. So, because we're not just changing our tech stack, we're basically shaping our team's future. And it was essential to provide the right resources and learning opportunities. And the more a team knew about Flutter, the more they became enthusiastic about this transition. So we provided unlimited resources, enabling engineers to explore and learn at their own pace. We also created an experimental playground, a safe space where they could explore, innovate and learn from their mistakes and without fear. Some even got the opportunity to work directly on our new Tide India product, like we mentioned, 
a first iteration of the next generation of universal client applications. Now, as our team became more comfortable with Flutter, we also brought in ex external Flutter consultants who accelerated learning and provided invaluable consultation on our architecture, but also technical solutions. And to further strengthen our in-house team, we also started hiring for Flutter expertise. At the same time, with the understanding that the shift to a new technology is not just learning a new language, and to ensure that the, the internal team's growth and learning continues, we introduced our very own internal Flutter Academy, an initiative focused on accelerating the upskilling of our engineers. Let's get a closer look at it. The Academy's mission was clear, to empower our engineers with Flutter proficiency, forming a strong internal backbone of Flutter experts and cultivating not just the skill, but also enthusiasm about Flutter. To fulfill that mission, we needed alignment and commitment across, again, the business. So we set an objective that will help us stay aligned throughout the process, and we published a playbook defining and describing the strategy and plans. And finally, for such a huge initiative, having executive buy-in and support is crucial, and our executives sponsored us and ensured that we have all needed resources. And throughout the program's duration, we introduced many different activities, encouraging group learning. We started online study groups where we shared learning material, asked questions, discussed everything uh, about Flutter or Dart. We kick-started the Flutter community of practice, a weekly gathering with people interested in learning Flutter. And this was a place to have open debates, but also make decisions about the platform. And in addition, we encouraged pair programming, one-to-one -one or more programming sessions, working on uh, basics of Flutter or even more complex features. And finally, to ensure a systematic and productive learning journey, we structured the Flutter Academy around a well-defined roadmap, the Flutter Upskill up Roadmap, a comprehensive guide that provided our engineers with a clear path to Flutter proficiency. And we created an tre internal Trello board to help engineers track the progress, whilst also started looking for inspiration in the Flutter community, where we came across an open source work by Alexander, a Google developer expert in Flutter, who also ended up joining Tight a bit later on. But nothing beats hands-on experience, experience and, the, and the power of learning by doing. And we wanted our engineers to get their hands dirty with Flutter. So we created an environment where they could experiment, make mistakes, and learn collectively. And this hands-on experience, experience was invaluable. It gave our engineers the confidence to take the Flutter skills from practice environment to real-world projects. So to enable hands-on learning, like we said, in a safe environment without pressure, we started two internal apps, the Flutter Academy app, an app to learn Flutter, made in Flutter by engineers learning Flutter, and the Growth Framework app, an app built to help our engineers track their growth following our own uh, engineering growth framework. And finally, as like we said, we didn't stop the world in order to migrate to Flutter, we gave our, our engineers the opportunity to work on Tide's next generation of client application and code base, which we nicknamed for marketing reasons, internal marketing, universal client. And this is a single uh, Flutter code base that will become our base for all produ products globally in the near future, the Tide India product, but also two light UK apps we release in that year. Six months later, more than 85% of our mobile engineers had gained hands-on experience with Flutter. They were actively working on at least one of our internal or external products, and they were ready to embark on the actual migration of our main Tide UK product. All right, so this part of the team already having some experience in Flutter and another part still getting on track with it, we started the actual product migration. We envisioned a team growth, which now consists of over 40 experienced, 50 uh, experienced Flutter engineers. And such a scale presented certain challenges like keeping the spirit of the single team while uh, maintaining communication and management efficiency. So we have split into seven sub-teams, each responsible for its own domain within our large financial product. We also created a building blocks catalog that listed all the features and the team responsible for them. This way, both mobile engineers and members of other teams always knew who to contact in case of a question about any functionality, a bug, or a change suggestion. 
Given how complex and big our future solution was going to be, we required a special team, which we called the core team, which has united all of these pieces in a single consistent product by developing fundamentals like project architecture, uh, core application mechanism, effective testing strategy, and other utilities. We believe that this team played a crucial part in the overall success of the migration, acting as an enabler for the rest of the mobile team to do their job in the most efficient way. Another big challenge we envisioned was the project scale. We knew it was going to be big, and we also knew we wanted to build all of our products from a single code base. On top of that, our complex organizational structure would unavoidably impact the code base because of Conway's law. And we had a diverse team of engineers with different levels of familiarity with Flutter. This reality imposed serious requirements on our project architecture. It had to be highly scalable and make the team of our size and structure efficient. And yet, it had to be within reasonable limits of complexity. In addition, it had to remain maintainable and consistent over time. To meet these requirements, we came up with what we call Lego architecture. Consider a Lego set as a metaphor. Individual Lego bricks can be combined to form a more complex structure throughout a universal standard interface. Our code base follows the same philosophy. Each small feature from a building block catalog is encapsulated in its own package with only a few predefined interfaces exposed. And just like a small Lego brick, it can then be easily plugged into the project. There is a link for more technical details. The Lego architecture consistency allowed us to fully leverage the power of code generation. We created a few feature block templates that allowed us to get quite a lot of boilerplate code uh, created by executing a single script. And inside that block, we used code generation to consistently handle everyday tasks like navigation, localization, dependency injection, and others. Once again, the link provides more technical details. Aiming for consistent UI, we created an extensive design system of reusable components of different sizes. We combined them into whole screen templates that could be easily customized for different usage scenarios. Creating just under 20 templates allowed us to cover about 70% of all application screens. These are just a few examples of the fundamental approaches we took in our project. Now, moving from the things that we introduced to accelerate the team to things that we tried to avoid that would otherwise slow us down. We felt the need to optimize our processes and wanted to develop our product in a lean and iterative way. So initially, we focused on implementing successful paths first, ignoring many potential error scenarios and edge cases. We focused on core user journeys that bring the most value, leaving the less common scenarios for later. Secondly, we prioritized implementing features to better ready UI and planned polishing for much later. We wanted to have a working, testable product that we could put in front of our internal testers as soon as possible. And lastly, we made a bold decision not to do any other migration. It may sound reasonable to include UX and UI changes since we are building a new product from scratch, but it could significantly slow us down because it would require additional back and forth communications and approvals from the business side. So with this team structure, project structure, and lean processes in place, we have managed to create a single code base to build all of our mobile products in Flutter in under a year. Throughout this time, we have been aggressively investing in all kinds of automation. We already had certain tasks like build distribution automated and made sure to reuse existing solutions wherever possible. We also automated checks that run on every pull request, which include code quality gates like 
zero analyzer warnings, zero unused code or dependencies, and others. Uh, creating tests is integrated in our daily routine, just like writing the production code. And additionally, we automated many routine development tasks. As you see on this timeline, automation has been with us throughout the entire migration and release. Closer to the end of the migration, we have developed a well-defined testing and release strategy, which helped us through those turbulent times. We adopted a ring-based approach. Users from company employees to beta testers would form target groups or rings. And users from ring one would get access to a new build immediately and have a chance to use and test it before it becomes available to users from ring two and then ring three. This was an important step in ensuring that any bugs were caught early and fixed as soon as possible. As an additional strategy, we rolled out each build only to a small percentage of users first, and if all goes well, the percentage is increased. So the new version would reach all users in a couple of days. During this entire phase, we held daily trash meetings, collectively resolving any new issues. Uh, initially, we decided to release to one mobile platform at a time, but currently we release new versions of our applications for both Android and iOS simultaneously on a weekly basis. So as a result of these efforts, we now have our mobile products recreated with Flutter. We release them to application stores on top of existing native mobile uh, applications. So our users just woke up one morning, launched their tied up as they normally would, and focused on their financial tasks as usual without realizing the scale of the transformation that has just happened under the hood. Reflecting on main objectives of the migration, we are happy to share that we not only achieved but exceeded them. Our lead time to market has significantly improved thanks to Flutter Unified code base. We can build products faster and more efficiently. We no longer have separate teams for iOS and Android, which has streamlined our operations, leading to productivity gains and cost savings. And with a single shared code base, we reached effortless feature parity. The exciting part is that we now have a code base that not only meets our current needs, but also is ready to handle future requirements, all enabled by Flutter technology. Jorgos. Thank you, Anna. So as we're now getting closer to the end of the presentation, let's recap a few of the learnings and key takeaways. Firstly, focus is crucial. Staying focused at a few tasks at a time boosted our progress, uh, sorry, boosted our progress, morale, and efficiency. Secondly, prioritizing wisely is very important. We stayed on track by focusing on the important tasks and prioritizing key user journeys, and we did well regular reassessment and ensure that we uh, meet the evolving project needs. Lastly, a robust pro process is essential. Clear communication at all, level, all team levels facilitated the smooth transition, and embracing a lean iterative development process and a well-defined release strategy proved invaluable. And let's summarize the key takeaways you can take from our journey. Regarding the business, we align stakeholders transparently communicating the benefits of migrating to Flutter with consistent progress updates. We maintain transparency and trust, which was crucial, very crucial for this shift. And with a greenfield approach, we avoided any unnecessary complexity. For our people, we focus on upskilling the team, provided, providing comprehensive Dart and Flutter training, and the supported environment we created uh, kept uh, our engineers motivated during this transition. We emphasize knowledge sharing and collaboration for high team uh, engagement and productivity. And for the technology itself, well, Flutter, relatively new framework, proved ready for large scale mobile applications. And we validated ourselves Flutter support for speed, efficiency, but also consistent cross platform uh, development. And finally, we leverage this ability for optimizing lead time to market and achieving feature parity effortlessly. And with that, we've come to the end of the presentation. Um, here are some links and a QR code to download the slides and reach out for questions. Thank you again for your attention today and joining us. 
enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you.